this is Stephanie. I am going to show you how to make and customize this wooden board with a photograph and chalk paint. In your kit, you should have received a wooden board that measures 10 and a half inches square. You will also have a smaller wooden piece that is approximately five and a half inches square. You will have two complementary colors of chalk paint as well as some glue, some painter's tape, burlap ribbon. You will also need Mod Podge, some foam brushes, and some sandpaper. I also have a photograph that I have prepared that measures five inches square. I just had a five by seven photograph printed and cut it down to five by five. The first thing that we're going to do is paint the base color onto our board. We will need to paint the entire surface plus the sides. And if you wish, you can do the back, although nobody is really going to see that part. I am choosing to paint the base with this blue-green color called Vintage. It's Americana chalk paint. And then I will do my complementary stripe with this color called Whisper. To start with, I will take my foam brush and dip it into Vintage and just start painting it across. Chalk paint is a lot thicker than just your everyday acrylic paint. So um, it goes on pretty quickly. It covers very well. You don't want a really thick coat. It dries better and more smoothly if you do a couple of thinner coats. So just take a little time to paint that on and let the first coat dry before you do the second coat and then we will be right back. I have my first coat of vintage painted on my board and I'm waiting for it to dry. There was one thing that I forgot to mention is when you're painting you want your strokes to go across the board probably in the same direction that our stripes are going to go. You do tend to see the brush marks a little bit with the chalk paint. So if you were painting just all over in all different directions, um, you probably wouldn't be happy with how that looked. I have painted two coats of vintage onto the large board and I also painted the smaller board, um, two coats. We are going to be covering this middle section up with our photograph. It will be covering these two holes as well as the center. We will do the stripes on the large board. Now, this board measures 10 and a half inches by 10 and a half inches. It does have this little routered edge that makes the board look a little bit smaller, but we're going to still pretend it's 10 and a half inches square. And I have divided it up evenly into six spaces and figured out where I would need to mark it for my stripes. So I am taking a ruler, just any ruler will do, and lining it up with the edges so that I have it, you know, down to ten and a half here. And then we're going to mark just lightly with a pencil at one and three quarter inches, at three and a half inches five and a quarter inches, seven inches, and eight and three quarter inches. And then you will also want to do this on the other side as well. Okay, I don't know if you can see on camera, but I have made my pencil marks going all the way down my board. And now we're going to take some of the painter's tape and we're going to mask off the areas where we want to paint our cream colored stripe. 
So I'm going to tear off a piece that will stretch all the way across, plus overlap the edges just a little bit, and I'm going to match the tape from one mark on one side to the other. And I'm going to have a blue stripe on the top, and then the next stripe will be cream. So we're going to mask off this top part. And we're going to do that all the way down so that we have alternating stripes of blue and cream. Because I want to distress the background in certain places, a neat way to do that is by using some petroleum jelly. So before we paint on the creamy color, um, I am dipping my finger in a, just a little bit of petroleum jelly, and I'm going to rub that in a few spots that I want to distress. just here and there. You don't want a lot of it. But what happens is that when we paint over this with the cream color and distress it with sandpaper later, it makes the paint come up really easy in those spots. And so you don't have to spend all this time just sanding and sanding to reveal the color underneath. So I'm just going to do that here and there. I don't really want to go overboard with it. And you don't want really big gobs of it either because you don't want to spread it around with your brush when you're painting the cream color. But just here and there, I'm going to do some on the edges as well. Okay, so I have it, I think, in all of the places that I want it to be. And then take your brush and just paint the cream color in those spots that we want it to be. Now chalk paint cleans up very easily. It is water based and so I am just using the same brush that I used when I painted the blue color on and then I just rinse the paint out so it's really fast and easy cleanup. Okay I'm just going to finish this and let it dry. Um, it may take three coats of paint of the creamy paint so I will do that and when it's dry I will be back. I have allowed um, the cream color paint to dry and I did have to clean up just a little bit along the edges with the damp cloth but it comes off really easy. If you wanted um, you could tape off these edges as well. If, if you wanted to, um, I guess it depends on how picky you are and how crisp of a line you want, but that would make it really easy too. So in hindsight, that is something that could have been done. Anyway, um, it's time now to distress the edges or the surface of the cream stripes. And I'm trying to remember where I had placed the petroleum jelly because that's the part that's going to stand up really easy. So I just took a little piece of sandpaper and okay, as you can see, it just comes up so fast, just where we want it distressed. I have sanded the edges and the surface of the cream color and it's just given this really great distressed look. I have also sanded along the edges here around the whole board so that in some spots you can see the wood showing through even on the blue paint. I also have taken my smaller wooden square and I have sanded the edges of it too. I don't know how well you can see that, but a little bit of the wood is showing on the corners and the routed edge on this as well. So I love how it turned out. I love how shabby it is. Now you don't have to distress at all if you don't want or you can just do it as much or as little as you like. So the next step that we're going to do is attach the photo to the small wooden square. I have cut my photo to 
5 inches by 5 inches and we will actually be Mod Podging it on here and it will be covering up those two holes so we won't even see those holes there. Now this part does require you to be careful when applying the Mod Podge. I don't want to Mod Podge over the top of my photograph. The reason why is because I want to keep the look that the chalk paint gives, that matte finish. This time what we're going to do is actually apply the Mod Podge directly to the back of the photo only and not to the wood at all. Now this requires us to work pretty quickly because Mod Podge dries, starts to dry really fast. You want to make sure it's thoroughly covered on the surface so that you don't have any bubbles. Don't move your photo into any Mod Podge that might get on your working surface or you'll have some Mod Podge that shows up on the front. If you don't want to deal with the Mod Podge, you can use just a regular school glue stick, just an Avery brand or whatever kind of white children's glue stick that you can find. Um, it will not stick as permanently and with time you might have the edges of your photo curl up on the wood, but it is a good solution if you don't want to deal with the Mod Podge. So that's an idea as well. I'm just going to start spreading this on, making sure that I get to all the way to the edge and all of the corners as well. I have it all on the middle, so now I want to make sure that all of my edges are covered. When you dip your brush in the Mod Podge, um, don't get a whole bunch on your brush, just do a little bit. Okay, that's completely covered. And I'm just going to center this right on the wood piece and just start smoothing. I'm going to grab a paper towel because I have a little bit of Mod Podge on my fingers and I don't want that to get on my photograph. I'm just making sure that they're that it's stuck down really well everywhere because I don't want there to be an air bubble that comes up. Okay, so that is on there. And the next thing that I need to do is attach this smaller wooden piece to the center of my big square. Now, I decided that I wanted to have a, the blue stripe on top. And the reason why is because this burlap ribbon is a little bit of a lighter color and I think it will show up better if it's on the top, on the blue. I'm just going to tie a knot in this really quick right now. So as you can see, I think that's going to look better if it's attached to a blue stripe instead of the cream there. So. I'm going to go ahead and just using the E6000 glue, I'm going to put some glue on the bottom here and just get it centered. Okay, if you want to measure so that this is centered in the middle of your big plate, you can use these stripes to kind of um, eyeball where it's going to be centered this way. But if you want to make sure it's centered this way, you can just measure with the ruler. I just measured and figured out where it was even on both sides. And then you can just place a piece of painter's tape along the edge. Just right there. So when you glue, you'll know. And if you wanted, you could put a piece of tape. just along here as well. That's just going to kind of give you a guideline so that when you have the glue on there, just at a quick glance, you'll know that that's where you want to lay it down is right there. So that's just a little tip that I like to do. So I'm just going to take some of this E6000 
and you don't need to get it all over the whole surface. In fact, I don't ever really put it too close to the edges because I don't want it to squeeze out from underneath the project and get on the main part. So really you just kind of need some glue in the center there. And it does let you wiggle it around a little bit because it it doesn't dry immediately. So it does give you a chance if you feel like it's not where you want it that you know it gives you a chance to move it around just a little. That's another reason why I don't like to have the glue going right to the very edge is because um, then if you have to shift it, you end up with glue where you don't want it to be. So I'm going to let that dry there and the last thing that we'll need to do is is glue on the burlap bow so I have this and I'm just going to use a hot glue gun to secure that into place so I just have a dab of hot glue there and I'm just going to center this and attach it there. Now the fun thing about burlap is if you want, you can kind of pull out some of these edges if you want it to look a little more frayed or you can trim them off straight however it is you want with that grungy, give it a little more grungy look if you want or a little more smooth edge. So you can play around with that a little bit. I don't have a finger now to pick that up. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave this and let this dry all the way but I am really excited about how this turned out. I love the colors with the beach photograph and just kind of the shabby vintage look um, all of the textures that are on there. I, I really like this so I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and we will see you next time. Mm -hmm.